jet fighters take off from the carrier Essex during summer maneuvers in the Pacific. In the precision flying necessary for carrier work, the chance of a mishap rides on every landing. Here, the ship's arresting gear fails and the plane skids down the deck. Ready for just such an emergency, a helicopter is aloft in seconds to rescue the pilot who can appreciate the feeling behind the old saying that good landings are the ones you can walk away from. The B-36 is streamlined for speed as a crewman shrinks to ant size on the 230-foot wing. The mammoth bomber has been stripped of five tons in weight to permit cruising at a height of 50,000 feet and at a speed of 430 miles an hour. A photographic highlight of this summer aerial review is a truly remarkable camera angle of the B-36 as it passes directly overhead. As the bomb bays open, we can look right into the heart of the 200-ton bomber as it rolls on and on and on. The featherweight B-36 with its global range is the mighty backbone of America's aerial shield. And on the heels of the B-36 is a super jet giant, the B-52. But for the present, the baby B-36 will fly high and far, alert and ready for action. Mid-air refueling extends the range of another bomber, the B-47. The most delicate part of the operation is making contact at 200 miles an hour. When finally accomplished, hundreds of gallons of jet fuel are pumped into the tanks of the bomber below. Both planes must hold their course until the fueling is completed, and then the stratojet drops away. Although considered a medium-range plane, aerial refueling has broadened the wings of the B-47. Speed, not distance, is the aim of the Bell X-2 rocket plane, all but obscured beneath an Air Force bomber. The test plane is built of a special metal to resist the heat barrier, the searing temperature produced at great speeds by air friction. Behind a glass windshield built to withstand a thousand degrees, pilot Pete Everest waits. The drop-off. Everest brings to life his special rocket engine, packing as much power as a big Navy cruiser. Rocket power is applied gradually as Everest streaks faster and faster until he reaches a fantastic new airspeed record, 1,900 miles an hour. Everest lands the X-2 in a triumphant spray of dust, a salute to a record-smashing flight, 1,900 miles per hour. Donning parachutes, these jumpers are preparing for a demonstration in controlled parachuting. With stopwatch set and altimeter checked, each man is ready to go aloft. In practice flights such as these, the jumpers study ways of cutting the risk of injury to pilots forced to bail out of their planes. This is spot jumping with a parachutist trying to land in a circle far below, or if possible, on the cross inside the circle. By skillfully maneuvering the lines of his parachute, the jumper can actually control his descent. Here, incredible as it seems, one lands not only on his feet, but also on the cross. Next is the free jumping, where the parachutist spread eagles into space. Watch him as he drops like a bird, controlling his body instead of letting himself twist, roll, or somersault through the air. Plummeting toward Earth, 80, 90, 100, 110 miles an hour, the parachutist waits until the last split second to open his chute. Parachute jumping is not a sport, but a science to men seeking safer landings for all who have to hit the silk.